folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. Last week I did review The Adam Project, the latest Netflix film with Ryan Reynolds uh, joining in with Mark Wolfalo, Jennifer Gardner, Zoe Saldana, Catherine Keener, and Walter Scott Bell, which was a story about uh, an older pilot uh, who just took his time jet, trying to go straight into the quantum loophole of 2018 for the rescue mission, but he accidentally crash lands into his past life when he was a 12 year old boy. And so now he begins to see his own self. Now he's trying to find a way to stop time travel from happening that was coming from an evil, corrupt um, businesswoman who's joining in with her guard who actually was working together with his father, who was a quantum physicist, you know, scientist, that lead to all this. So. It's a fantastic film. You should check it out. It has a lot of humor, wit, heartwarming, and, and all. See, if you're a fan of Ryan Reynolds and his usual persona that he does, you know, for Deadpool, and all your favorite actors, just check it out. You'll love it. Anyway, I'm going to be reviewing a new movie this week that that's also available on streaming exclusively to Disney+. Plus. It's the latest Disney and Pixar animated feature that's a coming-of-age story simply called Turning Red. It's a story about a 13-year-old girl who suddenly transforms into a giant red panda ever since she started getting those higher emotions that were affecting her, you know, where she gets angry, frustrated, humiliated, and excited but she does hang around with her best friends all of which were interested in their boy band called Fort Town and also she hangs around with her family including her strict overbearing and overprotected mother of hers which I guess it kinda leads to an ancient blessing that was happening Sort of similar to the movie Teen Wolf, the original movie with Michael J. Fox, who was an outcast teenager, joins the basketball team, has his best friends on the side, until one night during a full moon, he suddenly turns into a werewolf, yeah, from an ancient curse, coming from his father, and it kind of leads to what happened next, and he becomes the life of the party. So, just like, uh, this girl named May, I mean, she's pretty much the life of the party, <laughs> in a way. Like, she was, like, at first she couldn't get used to this, but now somehow she wants up, you know, having fun, hoping to save money to get to the concert, even if there's going to be a ritual coming up within those months, if that's the case. <laughs> um... It also blends in with um, all of early 2000s um, pop culture and stuff, and they have a lot of edgy adult humor into the mix of the movie. Yeah, like you hear the words sexy, perv, and other strong languages that you never thought you would hear in a Pixar movie, but that's what they're trying to do. Like They prove themselves that they're going for a new audience that that can really relate to or the fact that they it kind of gears towards this age group that we all experience how mature it becomes even with the awkward edgy almost crassy humor and tone that they really went into I mean they even come up with some buzzwords like sexy as well as uh, perv and <laughs> and they even say all these immaturish um, dialogue that they went into that we didn't expect it to hear in a movie like this. She stars Rosalie Chang, Sandra Oh, as you may remember her from Alias, Grey's Anatomy, among other films that she's done. Um, Ava Morse, Matrei, Macrisvinan. I don't know if I spelled the name right, but you get the idea. Uh, High End Park, Orion Lee, 
Wai Ching Ho, Tristan Arret Chen, James Hahn, you know, the legendary actor who has been in, in Big Trouble in Little China. He was in episodes of Seinfeld, as well as um, Tales from the Dark Side, and also did voice acting for films like Mulan, as well as uh, Kung Fu Panda, among others that he's done. Yeah. He's a great actor. Terrific. And you can never forget that voice. Addie Chandler, Sasha Rhodes, Lily uh, Sanfilippo, Lori Tan Chin, Lillian Lim, Sherry Cola. Yes, Sherry Cola. Who would have thought they named them? Sort of like Cherry Cola. And Maya Tagano. It's written by Dami Chi, um, the same person who also directed the. Uh, the Academy Award winning uh, short film from Pixar called Bye and there's a reference to that too in the movie which is interesting because that's the one that came out before The, Incre the Incredibles 2 so it played before that and so this is the, her first um, written and directed um, full-length Pixar film and I'm glad to be proud for, for her to do. She's joining in with Julia Cho and Sarah Stretcher and is directed once again by Dami Chi. The movie begins in Toronto, Ontario, Canada in 2002. We meet a young 13 year old Chinese Canadian girl named Mei Lin Lee, nicknamed Mei, who basically helps take care of the Lee's family ancient temple that's dedicated to her ancestor Sun Yi. You know, she also lives with her mother and father, named Ming and Jin. You know, one is strict, overprotective, and overbearing, while the other one is rather shy, but also very caring. She also lives with her grandfather, also joined by other family relatives, including her grandmother and her aunts that are far away. Anyway... <laughs> Ming wanted uh, May to actually become trying to follow in her anyway. Ming wanted uh, May to follow in her footsteps by becoming very perfect, you know, as well as you know, try to be smart, intelligent, earning higher grades so that way she'll be able to attend college and also to protect the temple from an ancient blessing that's about to happen. That sort of thing. But May is not really interested in that. In fact, she wanted to hang around with her best friends at school, named Marianne Pryor and Abby. Yeah, Marianne, of course, is a singing tomboy with braces. Pryor is like a calm, cool type, while Abby is like a hyperactive uh, <laughs> who just loves to yell and scream every time she raises her voice when she gets excited. Um, energetic uh, Korean uh, Canadian girl so they just hang around you know uses their secret handshakes and most of all they're a huge fan of their idols a boy band named Fort Town which is a Backstreet Boys instinct type of boy band or all, all these other boy bands for that we get during this time you know, for pop music and I know this has been going on for so long but I know things have changed over the years. <sighs> I'm, it's, why won't everybody will understand that it's a group, not a band? See, this is this is the kind of group I'm not really interested in. I'm always into better music from that time, because I was in high school back then. Well, anyway, Ming discovers that uh, May actually has a crush on a local convenience store clerk. Uh, once uh, she was just doing her math homework. She was doing all of her drawings of this uh, boy that she wasn't really interested in, but she ends up drawing him anyway through her notebook. And that's where Ming got totally uh, furious and she intensely embarrassed May in public right in front of her fellow friends, including a school bully named Tyler, which led to May to have a vivid nightmare. 
Yeah, we thought this was a dream sequence too. To make matters worse, the next morning, May suddenly ends up discovering an ancient blessing and somehow winds up having a power to transform herself into a huge red panda. And this alone is what causes her a very shock and appalling because she tries to hide from her parents when May discovers that she can only transform whenever she's in a state of high emotions. You know, like whenever she, she gets angry, you know, embarrassed, you know, excited, <laughs> blushing and, and all, that's where she ends up turning into the panda. So she does go back to normal when she starts to stay calm, but her hair turns naturally red instead of a brunette. She does wear glasses, by the way. <laughs> But her parents believe that her distress is caused by her first period. So, of course, he, she wants up in the bathroom. She tries to hide out from her mom. And she's already trying to find out who she is and later on. Because this is what led to the embarrassment that happened at school when she was doing her homework. And, yeah, where she ends up spying on her while this Iranian... Uh, janitor was about to kick her out right away but she was about to grab her some pads and that's where it drove May completely nuts and she transforms once again into a panda and just quickly runs away screaming and just causes a lot of major chaos going around the entire school and throughout the entire city before she finally races back home, already sobbing and finding out why that she became this creature. Well, that's where the secret reveals. Um, when Ming and Jen explained that Sun Yi was granted the ability to transform into a red panda to protect her daughters, and every female family member since then had also transformed through their coming of age which becomes inconvenient and dangerous to all for, for the spirit. So I had so this alone had to be sealed in the tells talisman. So the spirit has to be sealed in a talisman by ritual on the night of the red moon. So this is kind of so again this is kind of like uh, Teen Wolf in a way. <laughs> which is going to happen in the next occurring time which at this rate was going to be in May which happens to be my birthday, by the way. <laughs> so May's friends uh, invertically discover her transformation, but tends to like it afterwards, while she was in the other bedroom all alone, so that way she doesn't cause a ruckus around her room that she did, all the scratches and everything destroyed. But May can, finds that concentrating on them will help him control what the wet panda with in her, and at that point on, she's beginning to become the life of the party so once she begins to get used to it for a while. But it takes a lot of time, but then next thing you know, there's going to be an upcoming concert for Fort Town to arrive in Toronto. And he was hope she was hoping that she'll be able to, to talk uh, Ming and Jin if it was okay for her to go as long as she tries to practice all the steps on being calm. So that way she won't go back to becoming the panda and, and to stay there for so long. But she refuses. Her plan was to have the girls begin to raise money so she can become the panda, to greet all of her friends, and that way they'll be able to pay, except for Tyler, to not only film this, um, for their video cameras also to be able to earn more money enough to get tickets to get there at the Sky Dome where they're actually playing at there. Well they only needed a couple more dollars left so Tyler decided to uh, invite uh, May along with her friends to uh, his birthday party which is coming up and he thought maybe if he's interested because 
after all, you know, he's been acting like a complete jerk, the way he's been treating May and her friends, especially the scene where <laughs> she actually threw a dodgeball at him and caused a lot of trouble. That he will invite her and in hoping that there's a plan that he might be able to earn more money this way. So he, she erectively agrees. And there we go. But here's one problem. Ming's grandmother is arriving on the same night uh, with her aunts. So they came by. They, her grandmother has spotted um, May on the news. You know, since they already filmed this. And now it was time for her to actually get into the ritual when the red moon starts on May 25th. So hopefully she'll still be able to have time to go to the concert before then. Well that's what led to a lot of problems because she had to stay there at night uh, with, with her grandmother and aunts, you know, just greeting her, telling her what to do and, and try to prepare themselves for the ritual. And her grandmother warns her that just when she was about to leave that she decided not to turn into the panda because it's going to cause a lot of chaos and, and how dangerous this power is. So yes. So now, she, she finally went back to Tyler's house for the party, but she had to dress up by using the cardboard uh, red panda costume to greet them, but that wasn't working out. So she decided one last time she'll be able to turn back to the panda. So now she'll become the life of the party. So that way her party, will, Tyler's party, will be the best. But it gets even worse when Ming somehow finds out what she's been doing all this time. And now she's about to ready to go after May by going straight to Tyler's house. Just when uh, May already have found out that the concert is being pushed or at this rate it wasn't supposed to be what it was. It turned out that it was on the same night as the ritual which is May 25th. They're playing in Toronto so it turned out to be another city that was playing it. So that's where he, she became completely angry especially at Tyler because of what because of the way Tyler is acting. And then after that, uh, May had finally picked her up, which at this rate, May was already afraid to stand up against her, even though her friends had told her that it was her idea in the first place. She knew she was interested in this. I mean, she was interested in, in Ming's ideas. So, of course, she couldn't. So now, her friends decided to go to the concert on the night of the Red Moon, which that's where May had to perform, so that way they can finally get rid of the, the ancient uh, blessing that she has of the Red Panda, so now she'll go back to normal. But she didn't want that. So she decided to keep it, and then she ran away, trying to get there as soon as she can to the Sky Dome to finally uh, attend it to the costume to the concert to finally meet what she'd been wanting to wait for for a long time. Joining in with her friends and also apologize to and then of course we found out the truth about Tyler. But this is where May Ming got so furious that now she decided to chase her around and she became just as her medallion had broken off from the talisman. Yeah after that she, she somehow turns into, you wouldn't believe this, a Godzilla-like giant red panda that's just as bigger than the May herself. And this is where she just goes completely nuts. She's about to ask everyone, where are your parents? What are you doing here? <laughs> and all that. So... May's family had came around, they're ready to put in the red circle, they're ready to put the entire circle so it can cover the moon, because already 
you know, the red moon is already disappearing, so it become the full moon. May is trying to, to stop um, Ming already, since he's already attacking everyone, already destroying the entire Sky Dome, and already ready to attack uh, the boys themselves and everyone around. She's trying to take her matters of her own hands by actually, you know, standing up against her by doing whatever things that she wants to do, like, like gyrating and and hanging around with my friends and and also, you know, going to concerts hang, and also falling in love with boys and all. I do whatever I want and I know there's this disturbing scene where she actually uh, started twerking right in front of her. It's just <laughs> crazy. Totally wrong, but after that, um, the rest of the family, which at this rate, the grandmother and the aunts had came together to finally um, help her out. Uh, that yes, they all turn into red pandas themselves, and now they're about to stop her. So now they'll finally get into the ritual to finally have all their powers back to the way they were. So now they become normal. Except for May, because this was her choice. You know, for some Yi. Because she also had been using that power. So now everything was going swell. Because now the rest of the Lee's family had gathered around. They helped raise money to repair the Sky Dome and everything that was going around. So now both May and Ming's relationship have finally approved. They balance her temple duties, where now she can become both a red panda and a normal girl at different times. So, there you go. And that's the key importance of the story, was that it's about, you know, families, you know, not only getting together, but they, but it also shows that daughters can do whatever they want. They don't need to follow in their footsteps to do so. It's their own choice. It's their life. You can't run overrun it right away. I mean, they want to do whatever they can you know, to survive. And it also tackles on on hormones, puberty, as well as uh, cultural uh, blessings, all of that. And also for mothers, daughters, uh, grandmothers, aunts, and also other family relatives, which can also deal with fathers, you know, cousins, uh, uncles, you know, brothers, I mean, si sisters, I mean, you name it. <laughs> That's the whole truth of the story that makes it so special. I mean, yes, the movie does get awkward. It did have a lot of edgy, quirky humor, which I do enjoy. Well, mostly the quirky and the edge in this and all, and that's what Pixar was definitely trying to go for. They're going for this very strong value and try to go very strong rather than just being like your actual Pixar film as you may know, but even other Pixar films had adult humor too, like Toy Story, you know, Bugs Life, and even Monsters Inc. for that matter. But it's trying to follow the other Pixar films that we had, you know, like Luca, A Brave, Inside Out, and all of that. So it really works for that level. And we all can relate to this story, too, because like all coming of age stories, you know, we all have to follow our dreams. We can do whatever we want. We don't need to let their parents, you know, tell you what to do, even if they try. I know they're trying to discipline their well, their I know they're trying to discipline their children, they're trying to do what's right and what's wrong, but I understand that. But no matter what they do, or how hard they try, they're going to have to do whatever they want. And nobody can stop them. I mean, they just don't understand. That's the case. Um, now, early 2000 culture, which I guess we can lead to other cultures from different decades of time. I mean, I'm not the biggest uh, 2000s or 2010s fan, 
or even 2020s for that matter. But I'm more interested in 80s and 90s so I can relate to the story. Um, and there's a lot of anime references in the movie, which I could definitely see how the animation really went for. I mean, even with the furriness of, of the giant red panda, you know, looking all cuddly and cutie that you just want to hug and, and squeeze. <laughs> sort of like a take on My Neighbor Totoro in a way, too. But there's also a blend of Sailor Moon with Inuyasha, as well as Fruit Baskets, uh, Rama and a Half, you know, the story where that boy uh, turns into a girl after getting hit by hot water. Same goes with uh, the guy who turns into a panda, similar situation. Uh, blend in, so, so Pixar really wanted to go for something more stronger, you know, more... <laughs> more adult like than all the other films that we had in the past. I, like I think it's trying to become more like DreamWorks in a way. But they'll still maintain the story. Um, the score is um, well just going for the uh, particular tone that they really went for. But the rest of the soundtrack, which I can't believe this, it's all written by, you want to believe all written by Billy Elish and her brother Phineas O'Connor. Uh, I, I know, man. I, I'm not a big fan of these, especially Billy, because now we know what she's been going through for the past couple years now. You know, ever since she became so popular, uh, just because you know she was a teenager. Uh, she's trying to fit into the alternative rock, but then, but pretty much all of her songs are just pop music. All she does is this whisper pop and on it. I'm just tired of that. So yes, the rest of them are just pop songs that's being sung by, you know, a boy band, of course. So it makes sense. But it indicates uh, from the score by Ludwig uh, Goresian. But there's also a blend of some 2000 uh, hits like the Cha Cha Slide and, and the Bullylicious type, yeah, by Disney's Child. So that's what you're in for. Oh, I know. <laughs> um, but there's also other references to uh, movies like the Goofy movie, which, yes, similar premise. I mean, Max, you know, fell in love with his love interest. Roxanne and hangs around with his best friend and plus he wants to get to a concert but Goofy just wouldn't let him because Goofy just wants to hang around with his son to do what whatever he wants to do you know that sort of thing um, but I, I gotta say I mean it may be tough but they did a great job and you got to it to Adami Shi to actually took her guts to create a story this uh, fun, exciting, not to offend everyone, but I know, especially what's going on with social media, with all the mutters out there, or parents perhaps, you know, being so triggered because of that. I mean, geez, I mean, just like how, how parents acted, uh, when they're not even on the internet, <laughs> you know, during family time and all that. I mean, I know it's ridiculous. Uh, but the voice acting is very solid. Uh, they really uh, match up very well, uh, especially Sandra Oh. I mean, with her performance as Ming Lee, you know, the overprotecting, overbearing mother of Maze, which I got to say, the way <laughs> her body language and the way she acts in the movie. I mean, that, that's just perfectly top-notch right there. As opposed to the rest of the actors, too. They really portray them exactly how everyone had acted uh, during this pop culture period, as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> and the animation is uh, incredible, too. So, it's nice to see what Pixar had to offer. So, unfortunately, though, 
if you want to see the movie, and it's definitely worth seeing it more than once, check it out on Disney Plus if you have the service. I wish they played this in theaters nationwide. I agree because this would be perfect to be on the big screen. But what can you do? Uh, so. <laughs> so anyway, that's Turning Red and I give the film 5 stars. Despite of the fact that yes, I'm not interested in, in this particular pop music or even this pop culture that we all know. But hey, I could take it for the story, for what it is. I mean, the trailer... I mean, at least the movie's better than the trailer, that's for sure. Because I know they were going to play some pop music from that time period, so, yeah. And anyway, I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.